Chapter 3 We sat in silence. Random had finished speaking, and Benedict was staring skyward over Garneth. His face betrayed nothing. I had long ago learned to respect his silence. At length, he nodded, once, sharply, and turned to regard Random. I have long suspected something of this order, he stated, from things that Dad and Dworkin let fall over the years. I had the impression that there was a primal pattern, which they had either located or created, situating our amber but a shadow away to draw upon its forces. I never obtained any notion as to how one might travel to that place, however. He turned back toward Garnath, gesturing with his chin. And that, you tell me, corresponds to what was done there? It seems so, Random replied. Brought about by the shedding of Martin's blood. I think so. Benedict raised the trump Random had passed him during his narration. At the time, Benedict had made no comment. Yes, he said now. This is Martin. He came to me after he departed Rubma. He stayed with me a good long while. Why did he go to you? Random asked. Benedict smiled faintly. He had to go somewhere, you know, he said. He was sick of his position in Rubma, ambivalent toward Amber, young, free, and just come into his power through the pattern. He wanted to get away, see new things, travel in shadow, as we all did. I had taken him to Avalon once when he was a small boy to let him walk on dry land of a summer, to teach him to ride a horse, to see him, to have him see a crop harvested. When he was suddenly in a position to go anywhere he would in an instant, his choices were still restricted to the few places of which he had knowledge. True, he might have dreamed up a place in that instant and gone there, creating it as it were. But he was also aware that he still had many things to learn to ensure his safety in shadow. So he elected to come to me, to ask me to teach him, and I did. He spent the better part of a year at my place. I taught him to fight, taught him of the ways of the trumps and of shadow, instructed him in those things an Amberite must know if he is to survive. Why did you do all these things? Random asked. Someone had to. It was me that he came to, and so it was mine to do, Benedict replied. It was not as if I were not very fond of the boy, though, he added. Random nodded. You say that he was with you for almost a year. What became of him after that? That wanderlust, you know as well as I. Once he had obtained some confidence in his abilities, he wanted to exercise them. In the course of instructing him, I had taken him on journeys in shadow myself. I'd introduced him to people of my acquaintance at various places. But there came a time when he wanted to make his own way. One day, then, he bade me goodbye and fared forth. Have you seen him since? Random asked. Yes, he returned periodically, staying with me for a time to tell me of his adventures, his discoveries. It was always clear that it was just a visit. After a time, he would get restless and depart again. When was the last time you saw him? And several years ago, Avalon time, under the, u under the usual circumstances. He showed up one morning, stayed for perhaps two weeks, told me of the things he had seen and done, and talked of the many things he wanted to do. Later, he set off once more. And you never heard from him again? On the contrary. There were messages left with mutual friends when he would pass their way. Occasionally, he would even contact me via my trump. He had a set of the trumps, I broke in. Yes, I made him a gift of one of my extra decks. Did you have a trump for him? He shook his head. I was not even aware that such a trump existed until I saw this one. He said, raising the card, glancing at it, and passing it back to random. I have it the art to prepare one. Random, have you tried reaching him with this trump? Yes, any number of times since we came across it. Uh, just a few minutes ago, as a matter of fact. Nothing. Of course, that proves nothing. 
If everything occurred as you guessed and he did survive it, he may resolve to block block any future attempts at contact. He does know how to do that. Did it occur as I guessed? Do you know more about it? I have an idea, Benedict said. You see, he did show up injured at a friend's place off in Shadow. Some years ago. It was a body wound caused by the thrust of a blade. They said he came to them in a very bad shape and did not go into details as to what had occurred. He remained for a few days until he was able to get around again and departed before he was really fully recovered. And that was the last they heard of him, and the last that I did also. Weren't you curious? Random asked. Didn't you go looking for him? Of course I was curious. I still am. But a man should have the right to lead his own life without the meddling of relatives, no matter how well-intentioned. He had pulled through the crisis, and he did not attempt to contact me. He apparently knew what he wanted to do. He did leave a message for me with the Tessies, saying that when I learned of what had happened, I was not to worry, that he knew what he was about. The Tessies? I said. That's right. Friends of mine often shadow. I refrained from saying the things that I might. I had thought them just the part another part of Dara's story, for she had so twisted the truth in other areas. She had mentioned the Tessies to me as if she knew them, as if she had stayed with them, all with Benedict's knowledge. The moment did not seem appropriate, however, to tell him of my previous night's vision in Tirna Nelth, and the things that had indicated concerning his relationship to the girl. I had not yet had sufficient time to ponder the matter and all that it implied. Random stood, paced, and paused near the ledge, his back to us, fingers knotted behind him. After a moment, he turned and stalked back. How can we get in touch with the Tessies? he asked Benedict. No way, said Benedict, except to go and see them. Random turned toward me. Cohen, I need a horse. You say that star's been through a number of hell rides. He's had a busy morning. It wasn't that strenuous. It was mostly fright, and he seems okay now. May I borrow him? Before I could answer, he turned toward Benedict. You'll take me, won't you? He said. Benedict hesitated. I do not know what more there is to learn, he began. Anything. Anything at all that they might remember. Possibly something that did not seem really important at the time, but is now, knowing what we know. Benedict, Benedict looked to me, and I nodded. He can ride Star if you're willing to take him. All right, Benedict said, getting to his feet. I'll fetch my mount. He turned and headed off toward the palace, or toward the place where the great striped beast was tethered. Thanks, Corwin, Random said. I'll let you do me a favor in return. What? Let me borrow Martin's trunk. What for? An idea just hit me. It's too complicated to get into if you want to get moving, but no harm should come of it, though. He chewed his lip. Okay. I want it back when you're done with it. Of course. Will it help find him? Maybe. He passed me the card. You heading back to the palace now? He asked. Yes. Would you tell Vial what happened and where I've gone? She worries. Sure, I'll do that. I'll take good care of Star. I know that. Good luck. Thanks. I rode Fire Drake, and Ganelon walked. He had insisted. We followed the route I had taken in pursuing Dara on the, way of, on the day of the battle. Along with recent developments, that is probably what made me think of her again. I dusted off my feelings and examined them carefully. I realized then that despite the games she had played with me, the killings she had doubtless been privy or party to, and her stated designs upon the realm, I was still attracted to her by something more than curiosity. I was not really surprised to discover this. Things had looked pretty much the same the last time I pulled a surprise inspection in the emotional barracks. I wondered then how much of truth there might have been to my final vision of the previous night. 
wherein her possible line of descent from Benedict had been stated. It was indeed a physical resemblance, and I was more than half convinced. In the ghost city, of course, the shade of Benedict had conceded as much, raising his new, strange arm in her defense. "'What's funny?' Gandalon asked, from where he strode to my left. "'The arm,' I said. "'That came to me from Tiernan Noth. I had worried over some hidden import or some unforeseen force of destiny to the thing, coming as it had into our world from that place of mystery and dream. Yet it did not even last the day. Nothing remained when the pattern destroyed Iago. The entire evening's visions came to nothing. Ganelon cleared his throat. Well, it isn't exactly the way you seem to think, he said. What do you mean? That arm device was not in Iago's saddlebag. Random stowed it in your bag. That's where the food was. And after we had eaten, he returned the utensils to where they had been in his own bag, but not the arm. There was no space. Oh, I said. Then... Ganelon nodded. So he has it with him now, he finished. The arm and Benedict both. Damn. I have a small liking for that thing. It tried to kill me. No one has ever been attacked in Tirna North before. But Benedict, Benedict's okay. He's on our side, even if you have some differences at the moment, right? I did not answer him. He reached up and took Fire Drake's reins, drawing him to a halt. He stared up then, studying my face. Corwin, what happened up there anyway? What did you learn? I hesitated. In truth, what had I learned in the city in the sky? No one was certain as to the mechanism behind the visions of Tirna Noth. It could well be, as we have sometimes suspected, that the place simply served to objectify one's unspoken fears and desires, mixing them, perhaps, with unconscious guesswork. Sharing conclusions and reasonably based conjectures was one thing. Suspicions engendered by something unknown were likely better retained than given currency. Still, that arm was solid enough. I told you, I said, that I knocked that arm off the ghost of Benedict. Obviously, we were fighting. You see it then as an omen that you and Benedict will eventually be in conflict? Perhaps. You were shown a reason for it, weren't you? Okay, I said, finding a sigh without trying. Yes. It was indicated that Dara was indeed related to Benedict, a thing which may well be correct. It is also quite possible, if it is true, that he is unaware of it. Therefore, we keep quiet about it until we can verify it or discount it. Understood? Of course. But how could this thing be? Just as she said. Great-granddaughter? I nodded. By whom? The Hellmaid we only knew by reputation. Lintra, the lady who cost him his arm. But that battle was only a recent thing. Time flows differently in different realms of shadow, Ganelon. In the farther reaches, well, it wouldn't be impossible. He shook his head and relaxed his grip on the reins. Corwin, I really think Benedict should know about this, he said. If it is true, you ought to give him a chance to prepare himself rather than let him discover it of a sudden. You people are such an infertile lot that paternity seems to hit you harder than it does others. Look at Random. For years he had disowned his, his own son. And now, well, I have a feeling he'd risk his life for him. So do I, I said. Now forget the first part, but carry the second one a step further in the case of Benedict. You think he would take Dora's side against Amber? I would rather avoid presenting him with the choice by not letting him know that it exists. If it exists. I think you do him a disservice. He is hardly an emotional infant. Get hold of him on the trump and tell him your suspicions. That way, at least, he can be thinking about it. Rather than have him risk some sudden confrontation unprepared. Mm, he would not believe me. You've seen how he gets whenever I mention Dara. That in itself may say something. Possibly he suspects what might have happened and rejects it so vehemently because he would have it otherwise. 
Right now, it would just widen a rift I'm trying to heal. You're holding back on him now may serve to rupture it completely when he finds out. No, I believe I know my brother better than you do. He released the reins. Very well, he said. I hope you are right. I did not answer, but startled Fire Drake into moving once more. But started Fire Drake into moving once more. There was an unspoken understanding between us that Ganelon could ask me anything he wanted, and it also went without saying that I could listen to any advice he had to offer me. And this was partly because his position was unique. We were not related. He was no Amberite. The struggles and problems of Amber were his only by choice. We had been friends and then enemies long ago, and finally, more recently, friends again, and allies in a battle in his adopted homeland. <clears throat> that matter concluded, he had asked to come with me to help me deal with my own affairs and those of Amber. As I saw it, he owed me nothing, now, nor I him. If one keeps the scoreboard tally on such matters. Therefore, it was friendship alone that bound us a stronger thing than bygone debts and points of honor. In other words, a thing which gave him the right to bug me on matters such as this, or I might have told even Random to go to hell once I made up my mind. I realized I should not be irritated when everything that he said was tendered in good faith. Most likely it was an old military feeling, going back to our earliest relationship as well as being tied in with the present state of affairs. I do not like having my decisions and orders questioned. Probably I decided I was irritated even more by the fact that he'd made some shrewd guesses of late, and some fairly sound suggestions based upon them. Things I felt I ought to have caught myself. No one likes to admit to a resentment based on something like that. Still, was that all? A simple projection of dissatisfaction over a few instances of personal inadequacy? An old army reflex as to the sanctity of my decisions? Or was it something deeper that had been bothering me and was just now coming to the surface? Corwin, Ganelon said, I've been doing some thinking. I sighed. Yes? About Random's son. The way your crowd heals, I suppose it is possible that he might have survived and still be about. I would like to think so. Do not be too hasty. What do you mean? I gather he had very little contact with Amber and the rest of the family, going up in Repma the way that he did. That's the way I understand it, too. In fact, outside of Benedict and Luella back in Repma, the only other one he apparently had contact with would have been the one who stabbed him, Blaze, Brand, or Fiona. It has occurred to me that he probably has a pretty distorted view of the family. Distorted, I said, but maybe not unwarranted, if I see what you're getting at. I think you do. It seems conceivable that he is not only afraid of the family, but may have it in for the lot of you. It is possible, I said. Do you think he could have thrown in with the enemy? I shook my head. Not if he knows that they are the tools of the crowd that tried to kill him. But are they? I wonder. You say Brand got scared and tried to back out of whatever arrangement they had had with the Black Road Gang. If they're that strong, I wonder whether Fiona and Blaze might not have become their tools. If this were the case, I could see Martin angling for something which gave him power over them. It's too elaborate a structure of guesses, I said. The enemy seems to know a lot about you. True, but they had a couple of traitors to give them lessons. Could they have given them everything you say Dara knew? That is a good point, I said, but it is hard to say. Except for the business about the Tessies, which had occurred to me immediately. I decided to keep that to myself for the moment, though, to find out what he was leading up to, rather than going off on a tangent. So, Martin was hardly in a position to tell them much about Amber, I said. Ganelon was silent for a moment, and then... Have you had a chance to check on the business I asked you about that night at your tomb? He said. What business? Whether the trumps could be bugged, he said. Now that we know Martin had a deck. 
It was my turn to be silent while a small family of moments crossed my path, single file, from the left, sticking their tongues out at me. No, I said then, I haven't had a chance. We proceeded on for quite a distance before he said, Corwin, the night you brought Brand back... Yes? You say you accounted for everyone later, and I'm trying to figure out who it was that stabbed you, and that any of them would have been hard put to pull that stunt on the time involved. Oh, I said. And oh. He nodded. Now you have another relative to think about. He may lack the family finesse only because he is young and unpractised. Sitting there in my mind, I gestured back at the silent parade of moments that crossed between Amber and then. All right. The crappy part about not reading for a long time is that my throat stamina needs to be built back up again. So, unfortunately, I'm going to hit you guys with a short chapter today. I was going to record yesterday... But I ended up uh, having some family stuff going on, so I didn't get a chance. Tomorrow I also may not get a chance to record. I'll try to at least get one chapter out. I should be able to get one chapter. Although, if possible, I'll try to get two. I don't know. We'll see how long it is. Like I said, my throat stamina is shit now since it's been so long since I did the last one. I feel like an idiot for... So the, if anyone hasn't seen the update I posted on the community tab, what happened was I got a fucking insane sunburn whenever I was out camping. And so instead of immediately being able to start recording more chapters when I came back, I unfortunately had the uh, displeasure of being laid up in bed for a few days because walking was too painful. Uh, so, you know, always make sure to reapply a sunscreen. That's the lesson I learned. I forgot to bring the, the bottle with me because I was floating in a tube on the river. So, and it was like a five hour float we went on. So I was, I was pretty crispy by the end of it. I was probably the, the worst sunburn I've ever had in my life. Well, Maybe the second worst. No, I'd say it's probably the worst, just because on the arms and legs, it was really bad because it was so painful to walk or move for like a solid week. Uh, I had a really bad sunburn when I was visiting my in-laws in Sri Lanka a couple years ago. But I was on my back, which made it suck to try to sleep because it was just super painful all the time. And, like, putting on clothes and stuff sucked. But I could at least walk. Uh, with this, it was just, it was so painful. So, yeah, definitely gonna be a sunscreen junkie from now on because, dang, don't want to go through that again. My legs turned into plastic wrap for a while. I'm still peeling some stuff. And there's still a couple of raw spots on my uh, like elbows and on my shins from where it's not 100% healed up yet. But yeah, that was pretty rough. I went through like two batches, two bottles of the, uh, the uh, aloe gel with lidocaine. And some emergency burn cream. And then on the last day, I started using... Some, on the, the last day? The last few days, I just started using uh, only moisturizer. Just to see if I can... I could get the skin to start soaking up stuff again and not be so tight. So that I could walk a little better. I didn't, I wasn't able to like walk without pain until like a full week after the sunburn. Like last, let's see, today is Monday. Today's Monday. Today's Monday. So last 
Tuesday, I want to say, is when I could walk without pain again. Although, I mean, the last few days of that was, well, it wasn't terribly painful. It was just like, I didn't, uh, it would hurt really bad if I like whacked my shins against something, obviously, but I could walk for the most part. It was just slightly uncomfortable. And, and that's how it was for like a few days before that. But yeah, I was glad to, whenever it felt like I wasn't healing at all at some points. But then finally, I woke up and I was able to get up out of bed without pain. And I was like, oh, nice. So, yeah, lesson learned. Uh, anyways, I, I try to keep my ramblings under five minutes. And I think we're coming up on that time. So, suffice to say, I'm uh, all recovered now. And I have family plans tomorrow because, you know, 4th of July. But... I'll try to at least still get a chapter out to fulfill my obligations to you guys. I meant to start on Sunday, but like I said, just some family stuff came up. So, uh, I was a little busy, but starting tomorrow, well, or sorry, not starting tomorrow, but with the exception of possibly tomorrow. And like I said, I'll still try to get at least one chapter out. I'm going to go back on daily chapters until next Monday unless more unforeseen circumstances happen, but I think it'll be good. After this bout of uh, misfortune, I am not going to be tempting fate by uh, setting off fireworks tomorrow. At least not myself. Like usual, so... At this, at this point in my life, anyways, I, I've started to get old enough where I'm just like, eh. It's just kind of a waste of money. They're so expensive nowadays. I say nowadays, I'm sure. Most of the people who are reading or watching this video are, like, much older than I am. So, see, I'm like, let's see, I'm 27. And I think the average viewer on my channel, Analytics, was like, and they're between 40 and 60, I believe. So, yeah. Which makes sense because my content is mostly based around classic fantasy. So, stuff my dad read. So, I guess it makes sense that people in my dad's age group would be my viewer base. Anyways, I'm going to stop rambling now because my throat hurts really bad. I tried the lemon honey drink the last time on the double chappy before I uh, got viciously burnt by the uh, ultraviolet radiation. Um, and it did help some, although I, I made it into with tea. And I got very cold by the end of the chapter reading, and so it was kind of disgusting to drink. But, you know, aside from that, it was uh, it was pretty solid. It definitely helped, for sure. I'll just have to maybe figure out a way to keep it warm. I'll need to get, like, a little drink warmer or something or uh, something like that. I don't know. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. More content pending, for sure. Uh... And after that, the weekly the weekly uploads are a lot easier to to keep up with than the the dailies because if I have some stuff going on on the day I normally record for a week, I can just push it off a day or so or do it early a day or so. So it's not as big of a deal, but the dailies are a little harder because I don't realize that I'm busy. But uh, sometimes I am. So, you know, that's just how life is, I guess. Anyhow, I'll stop the rambling. 100% this time, I think I ended up rambling for 10 minutes. I doubled my limit. No rambling next video, I promise.